Good morning, it's Phil to the Brim, and it is Thursday, May 2nd, and we're talking about godly conflict. Not just conflict, godly conflict. And I want to say this, Christ has given us his mind. We are new creations, and we are not to respond to conflict like the world does. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and we are Christ's followers, and we are to honor him. And yet, conflict happens, because we are different than one another. The Lord did not make us clones of one another. We are, we being many are one body. We having diversity and many times conflict can come from the diversity, the differences of backgrounds, which when we read Acts 15, which is our foundational scripture, that's where the conflict's coming from is there is a difference in background because the Gentiles are now being saved and they're from a different culture or the new thing. There's something new that's happening. And in Acts 15, there was a new thing. The Gentiles are being saved. It's an exciting time. It's a time of expansion. It's a time of fruitfulness. But now, things are changing. And they have to come to agreements about how they're going to move forward together in that change. Moving forward together in that change. And we can find out a lot about how to deal with conflict in the book of Acts chapter 15. And that's why we're going to take two weeks on this. But let's read the foundational scripture. Acts 15, 1 through 6. Certainly people came, certain people came down from Judea to Antioch, and they were teaching the believers. Unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. I've kind of landed in the last couple of days on gathering together to talk about the conflict, to come to resolution. That's what they did. And when I mean gathering together, having eye to eye, face to face, looking at the body language. And that's so important. We have to be people who move towards one another. Let me just stop and talk about what Jesus said when he was on earth about conflict. It's because he teaches about, in the same way, gathering together, or he says it this way, going to that person. Matthew 5, 23 to 24, this is what Jesus says. If you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Now, this means I know somebody's having a problem with me. It's not that I'm having a problem with somebody. I know somebody's having a problem with me. So I have to take the initiative and make things right. Even if I'm the one that maybe I don't think I should have been offensive, but I know my brother or sister have been offended by me. Or, Jesus says later in Matthew 18, 15, the other way around. If your brother sins against you, this is you being offended, go and tell him about it. Between you and him alone. Get that. Between you and him alone. You're not to go tell everybody else. You're to tell that person about it. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. So you are to go towards them. See, Jesus in both these things, when you know you have offended somebody or that you've been offended by somebody, they've sinned against you. And I'm not talking about petty things. I'm talking about some valid things that can happen. You still are to take initiative. As a follower of Christ, you're to take initiative and make things right. Not give the silent treatment. Not say, well, I'm going to wait for that person to figure it out and come to me. But rather, you're to go to that person. You are to do, have the initiative to go to that person. He tells us, go to the other person. Whether we did the offending or whether they did the offending, we're to go. 
in both situations, as a believer, as a Christ follower, we are to uh, have the initiation to go and rather than silent treatment, rather than distancing, go towards that person and gather just like Paul and Barnabas and the Jerusalem church did regarding this sharp disagreement. Now we can tell ourselves that they're at fault and they should apologize to us. They're at fault, and, but it takes humility to say, hey, you know what? This happened and I felt this way about it, that it, it, it seemed this way to me. See, because many times, and I know this is true of myself, and particularly when you're a leader and you have a lot of people that you're making decisions, right? And there's new things and you're making decisions. And sometimes you don't realize in the decision that you're making that you're being offensive because you didn't consider some things. Maybe some things that they're thinking about that you didn't consider in making that decision and so you offended them. You don't know that they're offended, but you offended them. And if they don't come to you and let you know that they're offended, the relationship is harmed, but you don't know why. So that's why it's important to not necessarily wait for somebody to, to come to you realizing they've offended you. Even if you think that they should realize it. Because they're maybe not thinking about the things that you have uh, thought about that have impacted you. So you are to go and you are to tell them what has happened so that it gives them an opportunity to reconcile with you. It's so important that you keep it between you and the individual. This is what Jesus says. Keep it between you and the individual. Just like, did you notice in Acts chapter 15, Paul and Barnabas go up. And they go up to meet with the people who have a difference, a, the sharp disagreement, along with James, the bishop of the Jerusalem church, Peter, the other apostles, to discuss in wisdom, in counsel, the resolution of this. In the same way, we are not to drag everybody into this when we have been offended or where there's a sharp disagreement. And particularly in this scripture with Jesus, he's saying, listen, do not bring other people into this unless you have first gone to that individual. He's very clear on this. Avoid the temptation. See, it's easier to go talk to somebody else about somebody else, right? It's easier to go talk to somebody else about the person who has offended you. Maybe it's a valid offense in that they did you wrong. Maybe they didn't know they did you wrong. Maybe they did know that they did you wrong. You have no idea because you have not talked with them about it. And so in going to somebody else, rather than going to the person, you actually fall into sin because you begin to slander them or degrade them or gossip about them. And Jesus told us we are to go to the person. So you are to avoid gossip and, quote, seeking counsel whether you should go to that person. This is interesting. Jesus said, first go to the person. But many times, people think they need to seek counsel. Now, they're truly offended. It's offense enough that it's bothering them. They're fighting off resentment. So they need to seek counsel to go to the person. So they need to go tell somebody else about it so that they... But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus did not say, go seek counsel whether you should go to the person. No, if you are truly offended, you know you're offended, the very first thing that you are to do is to go to the person. Now, sometimes if it's not resolved in that, you do need to seek godly counsel. That means wise counsel. That doesn't mean people are just going to side in with you, but people who are spiritually mature, that would, would be their first question. How do you know that they're spiritually mature when it comes to conflict? Is whether they said to you, did you go and talk to that person first before you're talking to me? That's how you know. If you haven't gone to that person, they're not willing to hear you out yet. That Because they're godly. They're following what Jesus said. You know, so many friendships are destroyed or fractured because people have chose to talk to other people rather than the person that has offended them. And that is Satan's way. 
You may guise it in uh, spirituality, but that is Satan's way to destroy unity within the body of Christ. That's what he wants to do. Destroy unity by cultivating disagreement, cultivating fractured uh, relationships, cultivating resentment. Go first to that person. I'm going to leave it there. More about this tomorrow. Oh, yeah, it's hard. Is it easy to first go to that person? Do you want to kind of get some sort of like comfort from somebody else about this? But Jesus said, first, go to that person. That's the question. Are you, are you chatting with other people? Let me say this too. At the end of the day, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow more. At the end of the day, when you've gone to somebody else and spread it, you know, and they feel bad for you and they've taken on that offense, and then later... It gets resolved, but that person doesn't know anything about that resolution. They're still offended. And it's become gangrene to them. It's become sickness to them. Because you shared it. Rather than going to the person who had offended you, as Jesus said to do. Alright, God bless you. Pray about this word. See you tomorrow.